my god, what is this? Hold on a second. Man. Shop talk? Are you guys running like a... <laughs> <laughs> We're at the mermaid. <laughs> that is horrible. That's probably the worst. Yeah, first one we sell is signed by the whole team here. That is horrible. That's probably the one of the worst ones I've seen. Yeah, before it blows up. I mean, it was like a couple miles from blowing up. It looks like. Did, did we have? A, we didn't have a chance to ride this. Is there thing, something no. else in there? No, like, that's the belt. That's, that's the Kevlar belt. material. Yeah. Oh, oh the backside of it. So you can see it coming out. That's crazy. So this bike still rode. I mean, this would still work in function, or in theory, this would still work, but look at this. Yeah, you can still do it, but yeah. you literally have. I mean, this is the less importance. Than 50 miles? Yeah. I mean, if you buy a bike. There you go. And you, it. Yeah, I mean, this is important. This is a service item. A lot of people. I've talked to guys that have like six, 7,000 miles on a stock belt, and I would say I'd probably do it every what? 7,000 miles? 7, 9,000 on the big bikes. Yeah, I change mine every like thousand miles myself but more on the performance bikes i think yeah, it's harder you've got a, well look he's got a did you put that in there he's got a race con that's way too stiff for this bike yeah he's got a red that's like a 2000 rpm contra spring in there so that's probably a lot to do with it is uh yeah put some more wear oh it's a melosi yeah yo paul you see this it's a he's got a red contra in here paul red. yeah it's a red in here so yeah, it, this is a perfect example of running a really hard contra because it's just gonna really push on that belt. I think it's gonna wear it faster. Yeah, so it's red's too stiff. And then I've seen too on some bikes, the actual welds on the pulleys will break. Yeah. The DOs, the welds will break because you've got so much pressure pushing against it. But yeah, this is this dude was, this, this thing was ready to, wow, look at that. Even the bottom too, that's crazy. Okay. Check your belts and don't red red contras. You may want to give him that option of if he wants to change their contra. Okay. This thing probably revs to the moon. Oh yeah. It probably revs to the moon and not a lot of top speed. It's gonna take a lot of force to get that to shift. Maybe it's a wheelie bike, bro. Only one way to find out. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, but they're all different, look. They're all different. They're Melosi's. Right? Well, but the wear is different on every one of them. I think somebody tried to make Dr. Police sliders. What are you talking about? <laughs> what do you mean what are you talking about? They're Dr. Melosi sliders. No, they're not. Because they're all different. This is in the day. Okay, so then they, so then they, they're just flat because I think they're probably heavy they're and a lot of force, right? Yeah. And they're working hard. Look at that one. It's a variator. It's, it's, a, it's a Melosi <laughs> variator. Well, yeah. I don't know, that's some pretty basic theory. Yeah. So from what I gather here, this customer's running, I mean, this is what a, probably a eight and a half horsepower bike, probably. It's kitted, I think. I just got the Melosi cylinder kit. He's got cylinder kit. He's got a ZX uh, full exhaust. ZX Melosi transmission. Melosi spring. Melosi kit. So the big issue here that I see with this bike, this is a perfect example of why you need to use the right parts on your transmission. First off, 
Um, he's got a red spring, which is the stiffest spring they make, which I think I run these on full drag bikes and RC1s that are making 25 plus horsepower, and this is making seven. So what's gonna happen is this, this is a lot of force on the belt. It's gonna take a lot of force to open this, tons and tons to open this thing. So what he did was ran some, in a shop, apparently put this together, but they ran really, really, really heavy rollers to basically combat this because the heavy rollers are gonna cause the front to open faster with more force to drive this open. So in theory, what he needs is he needs a light Contra, probably a, a white or you could probably get away with a stock, honestly, the white, but a white. white Contra, he needs a thousand RPM Contra and then some, uh, some dip, some lighter rollers because everything works with less stress and you've got this guy, the rollers are working really hard to push out and the back is fighting that. So basically one's fighting the other and it just wrecked, it just wrecked his, uh, wrecked his rollers. Paul, why don't you show, show Pat, Pat the rollers here. Yes. We've got some Dr. Melosi sliders there. I mean, it wrecked those things. And see, I've never seen rollers like this. So either somebody made them. They're, they're seven grams. Are they seven? Why are they solid like that? Uh, I don't know. They are not solid like that now. I don't think so. Unless they're, so, are they they're aluminum or steel? Metal. Steel. steel. They're all aluminum now, I think. They're brass. Yeah. yeah they're, they're probably a little bit older, but they're so heavy, they're yeah. just pushing against the variator and just flat spotting. I've never seen rollers like this that bad. The bike has what, 4,000 miles on it? So good example of not what to do. Couldn't have ridden good like this. No, I'm surprised it was running. And it just came in for a fuel. Come in for the common die tech problem. Fuel pump was clogged up and the fuel pressure regulator was not regulating fuel. Yeah, so. So this is a nice surprise. Yeah, this but it'll is run a, so much nicer. Oh, it'll be night and day. It'll run and run good. But this costs him, I mean, massive performance and cost him a $40 belt. And this was a, this red Contra is a waste of money as well and a set of rollers and then the labor Possibly to do it. Variator. Possibly the variator. Yeah. It's like the belt was just spinning on Yeah. It. So in theory, if you add labor to fix this, to repair this and all the parts, probably a couple hundred. Three hundred or so? Yeah, by the time you replace it all because it's our hour and a half, hour, hour and a half's worth of work probably to take it apart, fix it all, and then put it back together, tune it, and then the parts. Yep. So this was actually worked out to be a really good, a really good, that's um, a very good example. setup to show, yeah, what you don't want to do. Sweet. Well, I think that's the worst belt we've seen so far. I think so. Yeah. That's still intact. That's still intact. I was surprised. Yeah. Cool. Well, yeah, let's get this thing back together and he'll be happy once it gets going. Maybe. <laughs> we don't know yet, but we're going to fix it. You want that? So, Throw it on the ground, the rats will use it for a nest. Ne nest for your rats at home? You could stuff this in the Some padding rats. of your Camry to give you a little more cushion. You don't want it? <laughs> He's like, don't be silly. Alright, cool. Time to get back to work. They're a great product. Are they? We need should have brought some dry ice. Had like dry ice rolled out of here. <laughs> Ooh, those are my favorite. Why, why would you need this? To uh, pull cranks into your bike. Yeah. Wait, you so mean for my our, hammer doesn't work. No. For customers that actually work on their bikes, this would be the perfect product for them. Yep. So you got your large adapter. Large adapter. Is. <laughs> and then you've got your small adapter. The box here, you've got some instructions. You've got instructions, just throw those things away. Yeah, that's your um, super nice, super beefy crank puller. Point something out Paul as well. wants to point something out as okay. well. So with these, you get. Is there a prize inside? There is. Really? Yeah. So you get this guy. Mm -hmm. You can just put a nut on your crank, mm -hmm. and then pull it in that way, or. Flip, give her the old flip around. You don't have to do that. Well, you yeah. get this. You can hook up a M10 or there's an M8 or M12. Those look at M M12, right, a 12 M12. and a 10. Yeah, and you're gonna put and this. Then, and then you put this like so. Pull your crank in. Yep. And then this rests on your case. Yep. It's pretty sweet. Good I stuff. I bought one. 
Paul endorses it. Yep, I agree. Yeah. Paul tested, Brandon approved. So, so this is going to be on the website, right? Yeah. Yep. Uh, they might already be on the website. Yeah. If they're not on there, then I'll put them on there now. Yeah. yeah. I put them on. I thought I put them on. Yeah. However, I don't remember. Paul doesn't remember. <laughs> All right. I we're back in here. here. Hold on. You should sign it, and then we can charge more money for it. Uh, oh. Yeah. First one we sell is signed by the whole team here. Ooh, I like that idea. Actually. Okay, we'll sign it. Mm -hmm. Yep, we'll sign it. Okay, all right. Oh, that's your signature. You should see the one on my license, and then we do the whole boom. Ooh, then we cross it out a little bit. Hmm. Oh yeah. Interesting. It's gonna be worth money someday. Mm -hmm. All right. All right, there we go. We write a special edition on the box. Some guy PayPal'd me twenty bucks to sign this hoodie. Oh wow! Dead serious. How did you? How did you? Did you sign black on black, or did you? Oh no, I did it on the, <laughs> the classic scooter swap shop one, and I uh, I just signed on the guy's helmet. Oh, his helmet. I thought you said this hoodie. Well, no, it no, was on the helmet of the hoodie. On the, no, you're low. Oh, on the back. Yeah, on the back. You're a valuable guy. <laughs> so you marked it special edition? Yeah, I did. Yes. <laughs> Woo! All right, I'm going to go put these on mine. Uh, yeah. Sick. <laughs> Sick. Thank you.